Now, two of Kent's historic homes have been used as locations for a new three-part BBC Two docudrama series that starts on Friday. The Berlins, a scandalous family, focuses on the rise to power of one of the most powerful Tudor families, the Berlins. Let's start at Hever Castle first, then near Edinburgh, where several scenes have been filmed. The Berlins are one of the great stories in British history. Anne Boleyn had gone from a nobody to being crowned Queen of England. There is so much to learn about the games of power. Hello, my name is Dr Owen Emerson and I'm a social and cultural historian. I work as the castle historian and assistant curator of Hever Castle, the childhood home of Anne Boleyn. Recently, I was a consultant for, and an on-screen contributor to, the Berlins, a scandalous family. Now, I'm currently standing in a room now known as the Queen's Chamber, because it has portraits of all six of King Henry VIII's wives in it. But in the Berlin's time, this was the most prestigious bedchamber of this comparatively modest moated manor house. So much of their hidden history happened in this room, which is in fact a suite of three rooms known as the Solar. It was called this because it gained the most light throughout the day, facing the west, and also because it was the most private or solitary part of the house. Now wonderfully, the BBC used this glorious room for many of the scenes in the drama element of the documentary, and it's been utterly magical to see it dressed in rich fabrics as it once would have been when the Berlins called this now iconic castle home for 77 years. Being the best bedchamber, this space would have been the place where the heads of three generations of Berlin slept, the first being Geoffrey Berlin, who had escaped a life of petty crime to becoming Lord Mayor of London. He purchased Hever Castle in 1462, and I like to think of it as being the jewel in the Berlin's crown, being emblematic of so many of their triumphs. Through acumen and also advantageous marriages, the Berlins had risen remarkably high, long before King Henry VIII had so much as set eyes on Anne Boleyn. If you want to climb to that centre, you have to climb over other bodies. Let them grumble. This is how it will be. Her becoming queen might be a silver noose around the family's neck. Hello, my name is Kate McCaffrey and I am the assistant curator here. The Berlins are obviously a family very close to my heart, having worked here at Hever on and off now for about eight years. And I'm currently standing in a room that is particularly special to me. And that is our Books of Hours room, which is on the middle floor here in the castle. Unsurprisingly, given its name, this room houses two of, in my opinion, the absolute jewels in our collection. And that is our two Books of Hours, both once owned and written in by Anne Boleyn. These are hugely important items as only three books today survive with Anne's signed inscriptions within them and two of them are held in this very room here in the castle. Books of Hours were hugely popular scriptural prayer books of the time. They were traditionally Catholic texts and so were largely written in Latin but they were also wonderfully customisable so Owners could request the addition of certain prayers or images, and there was also a real trend of written intervention. So to add to these books by writing your own inscriptions or recording important dates of birth and marriage and death. In the older of our two books, which is a manuscript made in Bruges around the year 1450, Anne has written the French inscription, Le Ton Viandre, Je Anne Boleyn. In our other book of hours, our printed book, which was produced in Paris around the year 1527, Anne has written, Remember me when you do pray, that hope doth lead from day to day, Anne Boleyn. During my work with it, I've managed to uncover four new inscriptions within the book that we did not know were previously there. And what's emerged from these additional notes is a network of closely connected Kentish women local to the Berlins here at Hever, 
who owned and used this book and also very bravely kept it safe in the years after Anne's ownership and downfall. And I also uncovered a link between this book and another copy of the very same book that was once owned by none other than Anne's greatest rival in love, in power, in religion, and Henry VIII's first wife, Catherine of Aragon. So we now know that both of Henry's first two wives owned this very same printing that we hold here at Hever, and this has hugely intriguing implications for the relationship between these two queens, but also the um, insights that we have into Anne's religious development. And I'm sure there is so much still to be found from not just our printed book, but also our manuscript book as well going forward. But this room did not always simply house Heaver's two books of hours. And actually, in the time of the Boleyns, this room would have been their personal great chamber and the very heart of their family home. This room would have been filled with their best furniture, carpets, tapestries, and would have been a place where, when they were younger, the Boleyn children, so Anne and her siblings, Mary and George, would have been educated and also it was likely where they would have slept and bedded down together with their governesses or personal servants. As this room really would have been in the heart of the Boleyn's private apartments, surrounded by other private rooms, it's also likely the place where those history-changing moments were had and decisions were made. And you can just imagine the kinds of private conversations that were had between these walls. Likely conversations also on forbidden topics like religious reform, which we know the Boleyns were involved in. And I think it is this that I'm perhaps most excited to see from the Boleyns, a scandalous family. As Anne's faith and role in religion and religious reform has not yet really been delved into in most TV adaptations, I think she is still so often seen as this sexual deviant or witchy adulteress with this very scandalous life. And I think it is more than time for us to see Anne as the highly educated, highly pious, highly involved religious thinker and patron that she was. So I think this is what I hope we start to see with this show. <music> Hi, my name's Lisa and I'm the Digital Marketing Executive here at Hever Castle. So I'm currently standing in the Great Hall at Hever Castle and this is one of the rooms that they used in the upcoming docudrama The Boleyns A Scandalous Family. So when the BBC were here a few months ago I was lucky enough to be working and I supervised the shoot. I was here all week with the crew and got to know everyone really well and it was an amazing opportunity to see everything behind the scenes. One thing I have to mention is how the rooms were dressed when they filmed here. They went to town with all the props and they brought in everything they would need to transform the rooms as to look how they would have been in Tudor times. They had candles, which we never normally do, so that was amazing to see candles in the castle. A bit scary, but we had, don't worry, we had people on standby. The attention to detail was amazing. I mean, in the castle, there are, there are switches, there are plug switches, there are lights and they made sure that everything was covered up, everything matched with the wood perfectly. It was, the attention to detail was amazing and that will definitely come across in the, in the show. So another thing I have to mention is that one of the scenes actually includes a couple of horses going over the drawbridge. Now, this is rare and I, I'm, the last time that we had this at Hever Castle probably would have been in 1969 when Anne of the Thousand Days was filmed here. So. This hasn't happened for many years, not sure if it will ever happen again, so it was amazing to see a couple of the horses going over the drawbridge into the castle courtyard. And I think it was Anne, and I can't remember who else was holding the horse, but yeah, there's a couple, you'll see a couple of people holding horses into the courtyard. We also had uh, a team bring in falcons, so they had a couple in Anne Boleyn's orchard, which is just by the castle, so that was amazing to see as well, the falcons going across the castle and hopefully that will come across really well too. Anne Boleyn's emblem was actually a falcon, a white falcon. So having those animals included in the program is just a, it's an even more special touch. Surprisingly, there haven't actually been that many Anne Boleyn films shot at Hever Castle. There have been a lot of films about Anne Boleyn and about the Tudors, but 
production companies tend to use other locations and make them look like Kiva. So for us, it was so special that they chose to come to Hever Castle. It's a wonderful location and it just it adds to the authenticity of the programmes when, when they are shot at the place where they're meant to be. This new documentary tells the story of the Blins like you've never seen it before. We often see the Blin story with Anne's father, Thomas, almost pimping his daughters out to the king for his own advancement. Whereas their real story is far more complex than that. This documentary really does the Boleyn's astonishing story justice. And it's just wonderful to see Hever Castle glistening on screen. It's also been the privilege of a lifetime to be part of it. The Boleyn's, a scandalous family on BBC Two and iPlayer. Thanks to the team at Hever Castle for taking us behind the walls of Anne Boleyn's childhood home right here in Kent. Let's...